It was a beautiful, calm day. My sweet daughter holding my hand and looking up at me with a smile. My loving husband is next to me. I was enjoying a very happy time until I met that man. Hey, long time no see. Huh, long time. Ian, my ex husband, whom I hadn't seen in a long time, approached us with a nasty smile on his face. Did you have a baby? Huh, an old woman like you? I wouldn't be a mother if I were your age. It's none of your business. Leave me alone. I tried to walk away and move on, but my ex husband stood in front of me. He kept talking, his eyes licking me from head to toe. And then, as if he couldn't take it anymore, he started to laugh. You are old, you know that? How disgusting! Hey, you, you're her new husband? You lose your life if you don't think about what's good and bad for you. I can't believe you married this old hag. The words with my ex husband never seemed to stop. I clenched my fist when I couldn't take it anymore. I was stopped by my husband, Wesley, who was standing next to me, smiling calmly. Ian, am I right? Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. I learned a lot, and you were absolutely right. My name is Quinn. I met and married my ex husband Ian at the company I was working for at the time. Ian was a section manager, and he was my subordinate. After we got married, I wanted to have children right away. However, I could not have a child at the age of 34. So, I decided to have an infertility treatment. After a long period of time, I was 38 years old when I finally got pregnant. I was really happy when I found out that I was going to be a mother. It was my first pregnancy, and I will give birth at an advantaged age. In addition, I had to work and raise a child at the same time. I had no end of worries. But more than that, the joy and happiness of having the child I have dreamed of for so long in my belly was greater. I was filled with anticipation that I was going to make a happy family with my child and Ian. But Ian was not so sure. Fertility treatment is expensive. I spend most of my pre marriage savings on treatment. On top of that, the side effects tended to make me physically ill. It became difficult for me to do the same amount of work as before I got married. So I decided to change my job. After changing my job, my salary dropped to half of what it had been before. I was able to work less and concentrate on my fertility treatment with peace of mind. However, Ian had grown tired of me. The truth was, Ian seemed to like me because I worked hard and made good money. At the time, there was no sign of marriage for me, and I was on the road to success with my work. He took notice of my good earning ability. And that was the reason he married me. And yet, after we married, I said I wanted to have a baby. Ian didn't forgive me for changing jobs so easily and undergoing expensive fertility treatment. So he slapped divorce papers on me and left me. I would stand for a while at how easily our marriage ended. But I had to be strong for the sake of this child I was carrying in my belly. I had to raise her well on my own. I explained the situation to the company and worked my butt off. With the help of my parents, I managed to give birth to my child. When I finally held my baby girl in my arms, I felt like the happiest in the world. I couldn't stop crying with happiness. 
the one who was even happier than I was was my new husband Wesley. I met Wesley as a business partner at my former company. At that time, we had a good relationship as business partners. He was very disappointed when I resigned. After a while, we met again as business partner at my current company. He knew about my situation and was very kind and concerned about me. Wesley and I had always thought well of each other. It didn't take long for us to become close in our private life as well. Before the birth of my child, I remarried Wesley, and for the next few years, I was very happy. Wesley loved my daughter Ruby very much, even though she was not his own child. He takes care of Ruby to the point of overprotectiveness. After giving birth, when I became ill, he told me not to push myself too hard. He took care of the housework and Ruby almost by himself. I knew Wesley truly cared about me and Ruby. One day, we went for a walk in the park nearby. The weather was nice, and Ruby fell asleep right after we got to the park. Then I saw a familiar figure walking ahead of me. I quickly took Wesley by the arm and tried to go the other way, but it was too late. The person who seemed to have noticed me looked at Wesley and Ruby with a surprised expression on his face. He then approached us with a smirk and a nasty smile on his face. Long time no see. Um, Ian, long time. Did you have a baby? Yeah. You got a problem with that? No. I'm just wondering how could an old woman like you be a mother? You know, it's none of your business. Leave us alone. Ian stands in front of me as I try to avoid him and move on. After moving his gaze to lick me from head to toe, as if he couldn't stand it any longer, Ian started laughing. You are too old to be a mother. You know that? It's disgusting. Ian's words never seemed to stop, and he looked into the stroller. Your kid, she's ugly, just like you. Please, don't you dare say one more word. Or, if it was just about me, I could put up with it. But I couldn't take it anymore when someone makes fun of my child. Ian narrowed his eyes in amusement. As I took a step forward, before I could open my mouth, he quickly shifted his gaze to the side. Ian was looking at Wesley, who was right beside me. I can't believe anyone would marry this old hag, and she's got a kid with someone else. Really? Stop it! It's got nothing to do with you. Well, Quinn, you made a lot of money. That's all you were ever worth. Without money, there's no reason you want to be with Quinn, you know. My ex-husband is approaching Wesley, and is smiling like a devil. In this world, everything is about profit and loss, brother. Fools who can't think in terms of profit and f- and loss would not survive. Just like Quinn here. Quit her job to have a child. Those who don't understand profit and loss will just fail. You'd better watch out too, Mister New Husband. Maybe you were the kind of person who doesn't understand profit and loss when you married Quinn. <laughs> Ian's loud laughter echoes in the peaceful park. He made fun of not only me but also my child and Wesley. I couldn't stand it anymore, and I clenched my fist and was about to approach my ex-husband. Then Wesley, who had been silently watching over the situation, restrained me. Quinn, wait, calm down. Wesley, I can't stay silent after being told something like that. I understand how you feel, but violence is not acceptable. Wesley smiled at me, 
and I lowered my fist. Quinn? Do you know this gentleman? He used to be one of my subordinate at the company I worked for. I didn't dare tell him that he was my ex-husband. I don't even want to say that I once married this horrible person. Wesley already seemed to know that Ian was my ex-husband without me having to tell him. He smiled deeply and nodded in understanding. So it was you. Quinn, take care of Ruby for me, okay? Wesley said so and handled the stroller to me. And then Wesley stepped forward to protect us from my ex-husband. He looked straight at Ian with a soft smile on his face as usual. Ian, am I right? Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. It is true that profit and loss are very important, not only financially, but also in terms of the people involved. Sometimes it's better to think in terms of profit and loss. What you said is very reasonable and important. Well, you're not as stupid as I thought you were. Then you shouldn't be with Quinn. You know better. My ex-husband glanced at me. He was grinning more than ever. He put his hands around Wesley's in a friendly manner, as he thought Wesley was on his side. Wesley continues his words while brush Ian's hands away. You know, my father owns a business. And in business, it is very important to calculate profit and loss. That's why I'll talk to my father about what you said today, Ian. Is your father a present? If you want, I can talk to him directly. Ian's eyes lit up. It's obvious he's trying to take advantage of it. He still likes money and titles. How could he act so differently with someone he just made fun of? I was beyond amazed. I know you're probably busy, Ian, so I'll let my father know. I'm sure my father will be in touch with you soon. Well then, I'll leave you alone for today. With that, Wesley took Ruby and me and started to walk away. As we passed each other, Ian looked down at me. I felt a little pity for Ian. Wesley's idea of telling his father was not as good as Ian imagined it would be. I rather admire his naiveness to take it all as a good thing. I am sure my ex-husband will be called out of his office soon. Ian, who took Wesley's words as meaning what he said, didn't notice anything. Wesley's father is the president of a company that is an important business partner of the company Ian works for. Wesley was out of his father's company because he was now gaining experience as a working adult at another company. That's probably why Ian didn't know about Wesley. I also learned about Wesley just before we got married. Wesley's parents have been really good to me. When they found out that I was pregnant with my ex-husband's child, they didn't say anything to reject me. They supported me when I was struggling to take care of my first child. Ruby is very attached to my parents-in-law, and it's so lovely to see them all playing together. If my father-in-law had heard what my ex-husband said today, he would be in a big trouble. Ian actually went to work the next day and was called out by his furious boss. The president of the important business partner complained to him by name. This president was, of course, my father-in-law. My father-in-law, who knew the circumstances of our divorce, was furious. He made a phone call to Ian's boss and told him about his bad attitude and how important it was to educate his employees. My son told me that he was told by one of your employees about the importance of profit and loss. 
you should think carefully about how much profit or loss you could make by one person's mistake. When Ian's boss asked him what was going on, he finally understood the situation and called me. Hello? Quinn, I'm sorry. What is it now? An apology? I was taken aback by the apology I heard before I answered. I knew he would call me sooner or later, but I didn't expect it to be so soon. He must have been in a great hurry, because he kept apologizing over and over again. I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. Forgive? After you made fun of us like that, I thought to myself. What's wrong? Did you hear from my father-in-law? I heard him choking on my sarcasm on the other side of the phone. I guess he's got your kind advice, you know. I'm really sorry. I apologize. I'd like you to let me apologize to your current husband and the president in person. Did your boss tell you to apologize? Yes. I was told not to return to the company until I apologize in person and get your forgiveness. Please help me. We were married once. Please quit it. You've only seen me as someone who earns good money, right? You're getting carried away now. And you told me it was all about profit and loss. For me, it's a loss to keep you near my husband and my father-in-law. Talking to you who made fun of my daughter and my husband, it's nothing. But a loss to me. So this phone call is such a waste of time for me. If you understand, don't call me again. No, 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 no. I hung up the phone without hearing Ian's last words. He had said a lot of horrible things to me, and I still didn't have enough to say. But at least I feel a little better. My ex-husband must be panicking right now. After a while, bad reputation spread throughout the industry. To begin with, my ex-husband had always had a tendency to look down on others, and was not a man with a good reputation. When we worked together, I often had to clean up his mess. But after I quit my job, there was no one to cover up his mess. Frustration with Ian gradually built up both inside and outside the company, and then this happened. Apparently, Ian's boss was mad at him because my father-in-law's company was one of their biggest clients. In the end, Ian quit his job because he couldn't stay at the company. He is having a hard time finding a new job. I received a long email from Ian. Asking me to introduce him to a new job. In one of the emails, he wrote something like, "I know I said some terrible things, but I really love you, Quinn." How disgusting! Rumor has it that after he divorced me, he started dating a very young woman. But Ian had lost his job and could not seem to find another job, so she left him. You get what you deserve. He kept sending me emails saying, "I want you to help me because it's your fault that I'm in this pitiful situation," or, "You should help me because I still love you." Well, it's a very definition of karmic retribution. I've been ignoring all the emails, but the frequency of them has been increasing lately. So I'm thinking of blocking them. I'm still living happily with my loving husband Wesley and my daughter Ruby. Recently, Ruby had started to talk, and I can't take my eyes off of her. Ruby is growing up so fast. I, Wesley, and my in-laws are very much in love with her. I would like to keep this family happy forever.